And Tommy's up. Live from Studio 5 in New York City, this is the News at 6. We are just getting started tonight. Did you know that 20% of Americans work away from the office? And that number is quickly growing. Next, how companies are making sure they stay on the ball. Okay, we are back now with our feature story. Motivation is key in any workplace. And now that a record number of Americans work remotely, it takes some extra effort to make sure that employees are productive and motivated from afar. And joining me right now to talk about it, this is the man known as the America's Workologist, Dr. Woody. Uh, this is a fast-growing trend, Dr. Woody. And everybody seems to be involved in it, and how to so, handle it. So look, nearly 4.5% of yeah. the New York workforce is remote. And that may sound like a small number, but nationally, the number of remote workers has nearly doubled in the last decade. So mm -hmm. we've got to figure out how to manage this. Yeah, we do. And you're going to help yeah. us tonight. Okay? I'm going to try. Okay, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, Matt King introduces us to one company who has this concept all figured out. Here it is. We want to make sure that life here at work is wonderful. So we're here to bring out your best work. If cybersecurity company White Ops offers a yoga class or brings in a masseuse or orders smoothies for employees in one of its five offices, White Ops VP of Humans, Mai Tan, not only ensures the other four offices receive a similar perk, but also sends smoothie gift certificates or instructions to bill the company for a massage or yoga class to those who work remotely. So they're getting the same experience maybe at a different time. White Ops employs 120 cybersecurity professionals around the world. We go where the talent is. Allowing its team of hackers to live and work sort of wherever they please. Five of our execs are actually remote and they don't work anywhere, they work everywhere. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than 20% of Americans now spend some time working remotely, and that number continues to grow. An Upwork survey of 1,000 hiring managers found most of them expected up to 38% of their full-time employees to work remotely within the next decade. So I think the biggest challenge is actually time zones. Finding a time to schedule a meeting or a company event for participants spread between Vancouver, Buenos Aires, New York, and London can pose some challenges. Every room is outfitted with virtual technology, so you won't find traditional phones in any of our offices. This, Ton argues, allows White Ops to simulate an office environment where all parties share the same physical space. In the case of White Ops' New York office, a physical space with rooms named for places from the world of Harry Potter, cold brew on tap, and on this day a few dozen employees choosing not to work from home. We're living the future now and we're going to wherever we need to to find the talent. In the flat iron I'm Matt King, Fox 5 News. All right, thank you, Mac. Dr. Woody is back with us. Interesting area. I mean, there's so much going on here, and I know yeah. that you say the most important thing is to communicate. All work is communication. Yeah. I mean, you can't have function in any way without communicating in mm. some way. And look, we're humans, we're social creatures, and mm -hmm. we need that social connection, yes. which is really important. But what we also need is to build familiarity, right? So when you're co-located in a space, we're together yeah, like this. You see each other all the time. You have natural right. communication. It works. But you have to structure it when you're not together or remote mm -hmm. because otherwise it won't happen if you don't schedule it. And building familiarity yes. is the foundation of trust. Yeah, that's so very important. You have some tips for us, and I know that the yep. first thing off is to make sure you set up a regular schedule, okay? How, what does that mean? So early on in any yeah. boss sort of employee relationship, right. what you need is a regular cadence of some kind, a okay. rhythm to get into. I highly recommend doing 15-minute daily calls just to get into some kind of communication. So you're checking in. How's it going? What are our numbers? But it's sure. got to be very simple, 15-minute calls. And then you could you could spread those out as time goes on, but you got to build that report first. Okay, and you have to have this, this water cooler time, too, that we're all familiar with, but you can, you can still create that. Right, yeah. So anything remote, you have to structure, right? So like I said, when you're in an office together, it naturally happens. Mm -hmm. You've got to create a virtual water cooler. There are a lot of tools out there like Slack, Basecamp, Google Hangout. Mm -hmm where you could actually set the time and schedule it for people to have free-form, back-and-forth talk. Yeah. Because you need that flow of information. You do. Now. But you also have to have some of this face-to-face -face that you were talking about, even if you do it like once a year. That's yeah. important. I'm a big believer in yeah. bringing people together. Look, I'm a psychologist. I believe in FaceTime, mm -hmm. actual FaceTime. Right. And the biggest thing is bring folks together, whether it's quarterly or annually. Get the team together. I know it can be expensive, but it's mm -hmm. worth it. But the biggest thing you need to do, and a mistake I see a lot, is don't over-engineer the schedule. Right. The agenda should have at least 50% open time mm -hmm. to allow for those natural conversations to happen. If you overschedule it, people don't get that natural flow yeah, of communication. Yeah, and this is all important when you're working away from that traditional office. Absolutely. Uh, things to watch out for, things to ah. avoid. One of the things on your list, 
conference call. The why dreaded that, conference that call. Not good? We all hate conference yeah. calls. Look, you get on there, people check in, and next thing you know, they're on mute, or you hear them typing away. That's true. Or you're calling out, hey, Ernie, yeah. where are you? Right. And it's, oh, I pulled the mute off because I was cooking breakfast for my mm -hmm. kids or whatever. So what you got to do is make sure, don't have too many people on these calls. Do more one-on-ones if you have to. It may take more time, but make sure if you're going to do a conference call, make yeah. it small. Sure. Limit the folks on Yeah, and hold and back on the emails as, as well. I know you mentioned that. The, the yeah. important thing to mention here, too, is that, you know, there's a greater pool of talent available because of this remote concept. Look, rem having remote workers or that as a portion yeah. of your workforce is a huge competitive advantage because you can access people you otherwise wouldn't be able to tap into mm -hmm. from around the world right. that have different types of skill sets so you're not bound to the local area you operate in. So you have to manage your team and you also have to manage yourself, right? Manage yourself. Control. Control, yeah. discipline, right. take care of yourself, but also structure your time for your communication so it mm -hmm. actually happens. All great advice, Dr. Woody. Thanks for joining sure. us today, okay? All right.